personal finance practice problem using Excel. Life insurance calculation based on child age. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice, and blank. Example, in essence, being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. Information's on the left-hand side. Calculations for the life insurance needed on the right. Practice tab has some pre-formatted cells so you can work the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab just has the information on the left and we'll build it from a blank tab. If you don't have any of this, you could just put the information on the left hand side and start from there. I would first start if you had a blank sheet by selecting the entire sheet, putting the baseline Excel formatting by right clicking, format the cells. I generally start with the currency brackets and then no uh, symbol here and no decimals. I'm not gonna hit okay, but just close it out. And then uh, put the information on the left-hand side, adjusting any formatting as needed, such as the percentages down below, make a skinny C column, and then we're ready to go. So the information on the left says we got a married couple with two children, ages three and nine. One spouse is not working, taking care of the home, uh, support needed per year, we're going to say is 15,000. And we're going to use these returns down below the return inflation and return after inflation for part of our calculation. So here we, we want to focus in on how many years, for example, we might be thinking that uh, that somebody needs insurance. Again, you can get into a lot more depth in terms of different ways that you can calculate the need for the life insurance. But when children are involved, we might use that as kind of a baseline and say, okay, well, we would need children, we would need the life insurance if one spouse was to die uh, to support at least the child care of the children, uh, possibly child care needs for basically either spouse that would then need to be working and doing uh, the child care, for example. So we might use that as the kind of years as part of our calculation for the total life insurance we might need. So for example, we might do a calculation something like this or as part of our overall life insurance calculation insurance needed and let's put some let's put some blue uh, or some header formatting i'm going to select from d to f1 i'm going to go to the home tab font group and make this black and white and so we're going to say let's say we're going to start with the years until the youngest child is 18 and colon now you could get more complicated than this you could say well if there were two children it would cost more for the child care and so on and so forth but you, we're going to say well we're going to try to say until the youngest child is to a point where they might be able to have their own earnings would be the idea that being 18 that number also you can adjust that you can say 18 is kind of low these days you might say that you know they might need more support given this current circumstances beyond 18 so you can you know increase that number or decrease that number but the general idea would be there's going to be needed more support up until they can support themselves would be the idea so we're going to say starting with uh, 18 in the inner column. So the age kids are out, are out, are on their own, are on their own age. And then the age, we're gonna say of youngest, youngest child. And we're gonna say that age is three. So we'll say years until youngest child is 18 is going to be the subtraction of these two so we're going to say 18 minus 3 and so we got 15 years i'll put an underline here home tab font group underline now not oftentimes when you look at these kind of online tools that we looked at before online life insurance calculators uh we had we often get the the question in terms of how many years so like this one is one of the more basic ones but oftentimes they got they've got how much money will you need it for burial? So I won't include that right now. You could take care of possibly your own burial before you die. You could you could think about you know trying to cover those costs and prepay them, for example, or something like that. But that might be a component. How many years of income will you need to cover? So this is often kind of like a generic number. One way, and there's multiple ways we can think about that. We might just say, I'm just gonna use a generic 
like seven to ten years which is basically kind of like a baseline that people might need life insurance for that amount of years is just kind of a general number we might then say well here's how many years i would have been working until retirement is another way or i might say this is how many years my spouse would work until retirement or i might say hey look i'm gonna i want the life insurance to cover how many years the youngest kid is going to be at least on their own at least to some degree and not need like child care you know support for example and that's the calculation that we're taking a look at here and we came up to the 15 so the 15 years and then how much annual income will your survivors need would be the other kind of calculation again you can base this on many different things you might say well what's my current income you might try to take a percentage of your current income you might say hey whatever my income is now i'm going to then take you know 70 percent of it 60 to 80 percent of it for example because i won't be around for example and i want to just be covering you know the needs of of it that's one way you can do it you might try to figure out what the child care costs are uh that you think are going to be over and above possibly what you know what would be what would be needed if you had a spouse that was actually taking care of the child uh to cover working and child care for example and and basically uh use a calculation such as that or we can get into a whole needs calculation and try to figure out what the current needs calculation uh would be so we'll talk about mo more of those options with that needs-based approach at least in future presentations but here we're going to use kind of a generic number the 15,000 oftentimes they use you know uh 10,000 is kind of like a generic number I'm going to put the 15 here so how much money do you have in the savings I'm going to say no money's in the in the savings at this point so I'll keep it there obviously we could get into more detail in terms of how much debt do we have versus the the income but we're kind of focusing on the age here and then the children we're going to say the children I've got three and nine here, and then you can see their estimate on the calculator. So you can use these tools kind of in alignment with each other if you so choose. But let's jump but jump back on over to Excel. I would typically use those other tools as kind of like a double check to see if, if you're in the ballpark doing best practices with Excel. And then go back on over here. I'm gonna do some indentation. I'm gonna select these three home tab alignment indent. I'm gonna double indent this one. Uh, home tab alignment indent it again and so then we're, I'm going to say the support needed per year I'm saying is 15 once again we might calculate that based on some percentage of our of our earnings or we might calculate that on the needs based approach or based on child care needs if one spouse wasn't there for example I'm going to go to the home tab font group and underline it also note that we can use this as part of our calculation and add on top of it things like college and stuff if we wanted to have specific calculations related to college this would cover them up until they're 18 and then we might say I might have a separate college kind of calculation for that if I wanted to do that as well to tack on to it so then the insurance needed we would say would be equal to the 15 times the 15,000 the 225 so I'm going to go ahead and make this blue and bordered home tab font group border blue so it's a fairly straightforward calculation we could get much more complex but again we're just basically trying to get how can we get to this number a couple different ways we can get to that how many years we would need now notice you also might say well i don't really need 15,000 times 15 what i really need is the lump sum to be paying out the equivalent of 15,000 for for that 15 years for example so in other words if I put this in, I might have earnings. If they were to invest that, they might have earnings over 15 years averaging like 6%, for example. And inflation, let's say, is 2.5%. So we could say, okay, the, the, aver the return after inflation is about 3.5%. So in other words, how much would they need in a lump sum insurance if they were to invest it and basically get a real return of 3.5%? And for that, we can say, okay, let's try it try to do and because you can see that this number by the way is is substantially larger than what they've got here not that their calculation is perfect here this is a fairly basic online calculator but we we could see their insurance their calculations assuming the rates of return down below and we could try to make a similar assumption and say okay well what if what if we did a a a present value present value of annuity annuity calculation annuity 
I'm gonna put this over here and let's make this a little wider and say this is gonna be negative. I'll put a negative instead of an equal. Probably not the most proper way to do it, but it's the easiest way to do it to get a positive number. Present value brackets. And then I'm gonna pick this net or real return of the 3.5% uh, comma and the number of periods I'm gonna say is 15 that we're gonna need comma and then we're not gonna and then the payment we will have a payment we're gonna say it's gonna be a payment of 15,000 so if there's an annu a payment of 15,000 uh, for that frame how much money would that be that would be 172 a uh, seven 761 so in other words if we had that much in place and they started taking out you know the 15,000 per year or net equivalent then then we would only need 172 761 because of the earnings so let's cut let's try to break that down a little bit more I'm gonna go to the home tab font group brackets in blue and so let's try to visualize that and see what I'm saying here so we're gonna I'm gonna put my cursor on the skinny column home tab and format painter let's put that in column G making column G skinny and let's try to break this out into a table to see if I can understand what we're saying and say years increase that's our gains in the payment and then the balance so let's go ahead and make this our headers we're gonna say this is gonna be font group it's gonna be black and white I'm gonna alignment and center it I'm gonna make the years a little bit smaller in column H and let's put from 0 1 2 I'm gonna select those three cells put my cursor on the fill handle drag down to 15 years center that home tab alignment and center and so then I'm gonna start with my balance over here and say okay what does this mean if I had 172 761 and then there was an increase i'm going to say a net increase here of this the real the real return 172 761 times the return of the 3.5 and i'm going to say uh, f4 on the keyboard so i can copy that down and enter we would get a return of 6047 uh, 47 and then we're going to have a payment which you could put as a negative negative of the payment which is going to be 15,000 if I was to die they're going to have to pay out 15,000 each year that's the idea I'm going to say f4 on the keyboard so I can copy that down that means the balance then would be the prior balance plus the increase if they were to invest that balance minus the amount they're going to have to take out I'm going to say plus because it's a negative number here plus the negative 15 subtracting it out so 172 761 plus the 6047 gain minus the 15,000 would bring us to the 163 808 if I was to copy that down I'm just gonna select these three and copy it down then we should have down to zero at the end right so that's the idea so if they were to take out that much we should get we should get down to zero uh, and and we should be okay at the 172 760 one instead of the 225,000. Let's try to analyze that a little bit more in depth here. I'm going to make this blue and border. Going to go up top and say font group, make that blue and border. This won't work out exactly, but this will give us hopefully a little bit of better understanding of it. So I'm going to hide from column C to column F so I can see this. I'm going to right click and hide, not delete, but hide. I'm going to make a skinny L column by going to the skinny G column, home tab, clipboard, format painter, skinny L. Okay, so then I'm going to do another table here a little bit different. It's going to be years, increase, and then payment, and then the balance. And let's put this, our black and white header, selecting home tab, font group, making this black and white I'm gonna make them centered alignment and center we'll make the years a little bit smaller on the years same with the zero one two I'm gonna select those three numbers and copy it down to 15 years 15 years and then I'm gonna say home tab alignment and center that so then we've got the balance over here where we're gonna start off once again with the 172, 6, 761. Now this, again, this won't be exact, but you might say, 
what's really happening is we're going to say that there's a 6% return, but then uh, we're going to be paying out, uh, we're going to be paying out 15,000, but the, there's going to be inflation on the 15,000. So they're going to need more than 15,000 to spend the same kind of money due to inflation in terms of purchasing power. So if I was to say, okay, if there's an increase, I'm going to say I got this 172,761 times an increase of the 6% return, but really the real returns over th only 3.5 because there's inflation. But I'm going to say, okay, in future value terms, there's going to be a 6% return. So I'm going to say, okay, F4, F4 absolute reference, so we can copy it down and enter. But when I make the payment, it's not just 15,000 isn't going to cover it anymore because there's inflation. So I'm going to need to increase it by 2.5% because of the purchasing power of the, of the dollar went down. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the 15,000 over here. Or let's do it this way. I've, I've got to do it with a future value calculation. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to, I'll say negative future value brackets. I'm going to pick up the rate over here, which is the 2.5. And that just, it's just inflation. I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard to put it, to make it absolute comma. The number of periods is going to be, I'm just going to pick up this one right there. So it's going to be one year out comma this is not an annuity so we're not going to have a payment so we're going to have two commas and the present value is going to be this 15,000 here and then i'm going to say f4 on that one because i'd like to copy it down close up the brackets so the future value we're going to need is the 15,375 to equal the same the same 15,000 if it was in time period zero due to inflation so then if I double click on this, let's actually get rid of the negative sign and make that a negative number like that. And this is gonna be equal then the prior balance plus the increase plus the negative payment, which is a decrease. So 172,761 plus the increase of the 10,366 minus the payment, which would have to be 15,375 to be equivalent to the 15,000 that we looked at uh, in year zero dollars. So if I was to copy that down, I'm gonna select these three and just double click on the fill handle button, then it doesn't, it's not exact here because we, we used a different number on these two, but you can see between year 14 and 15, it goes below zero. So that last year it's at 18 instead of what we would like it to be at the 20, at the 21, 7, 24, you could adjust, you know, the payments for that, you know, the full amount for that 2005, 25 but that's the general idea right you're going to say okay it's going to increase by by the 10,366 but I'm not going to pull out the 15,000 anymore because of inflation we had to we had to increase it for the inflation at the 2.5 percent that would mean they would need to pull out for equivalent purchasing power dollars 15,375 and so now we've got this ending balance uh in you know the future value in the future value terms so you can see these numbers you know are different here because of, because this one is kind of netting out uh the values here the the net the net real return and so and this one is showing the actual payments we're trying to see what the actual payments might have to be in you know future time frames for the same purchasing power okay let's make this one blue and bordered i'm going to go up top and say home tab font group make that blue and put some borders around it so that is that now, the other thing you might look, you could obviously do with this, if you had a calculation like this, you might be saying, okay, is there a way I can set up my life insurance policy uh, if, this is, if this is what it looks like so that each year the life insurance policy possibly uh, goes down because you've got less years that you need to cover over that 18, right? We had the 18 year time frame once they get to year 18 once the ch youngest child gets to the year of 18 so you might try to think about a life insurance policy that that has the balance that kind of reduces over time for example as the years that you need to cover uh, goes down and you could think about that calculation in more complex ways or in kind of like a simple kind of way such as this so i'm going to then unhide some cells put in my cursor on column b to column h the hidden cells between them, right click and unhide there. Let's do a spell check. I'm gonna go down here and say review spell check. See if everything's lined up. Youngest, 
Youngest, out. I've got that twice. I don't need it twice. There it is.